Um, let's transition to immunotherapy. Um, immunotherapy is the newest and the greatest treatment of solid tumors, even liquid tumors. Um, unfortunately, uh, except in the MSI high endometrial cohort and in the pdl one positive cervical cancer cohort, it's all off-label. And even in cervical cancer, it's only a response rate of 14.3%. Uh, there was a, a paper uh, presented uh, last year uh, at ASCO, uh, Keynote 100. Mm -hmm. I just accepted it today in Annals of Oncology. I don't know if that's secret, but I don't think it is. I'm the editor for a GYN. Um, <laughs> tell us about Keynote 100. Uh, so Keynote 100 was a very large monotherapy study uh, of um, nivolumab. Pembrolizumab. Pembrolizumab. Gosh, I'm losing my mind as well. Pembrolizumab uh, in recurrent ovarian cancer. And it had... And it was really um, a study looking at efficacy, but it was also trying to figure out what the predictive biomarker could be for response. So it had two cohorts. One were patients that had one to three prior lines of therapy, and the other smaller cohort was four to six lines of therapy. And in the first cohort, they used the first 100 patients to identify what the cut point for the combined positivity score should be, the CPS score. And so the CPS score is not PDL1 positivity as has been previously described. It's the it's number of cells of tumor cells, macrophages, um, and um, inflammatory cells that are positive for PDL1 divided by the total number of tumor cells times 100. So it's a different score. So you could be PDL1 positive, but CPS zero. So it's a different way of looking at more of the tumor microenvironment. So that's how they scored it. And they came up with the score of less than one is a cut point, one greater than one, and then greater than 10, and that's the score, it doesn't have a percentage. So those are the cut points they identified in the first 100-ish, 90-ish patients on the one to three cohort, and then they did a kind of validation with that group, and then they validated it again in the four to six. So what they found was that the, the CPS score of 10 was predictive of overall response. You did see that response rate increase from like eight to 18% roughly. But the confidence intervals, even with the pretty large number of patients on the study, it was like over 400 patients, still overlapped, every one of them overlapped. So it wasn't a statistically significant difference. Um, and the durations of the responses were relatively short. So it was sort of a mixed message study. Greater than 10 was, probably a good cut point for picking those patients who would have the best likelihood of responding, but it still didn't pick a patient, group of patients who were gonna do really well. So let me go through the three conclusions. All comers, what's the activity of pembrolizumab in ovarian cancer? All comers, 9%, 8%. Yeah, 10, 8, 9, bad. Bad, yeah, and, <laughs> and then keto 100 was eight, like 8% eight overall. And does, is there T cell exhaustion? In other words, to the number of lines of therapy, is that an important thing? Is, is earlier treatment better or it's all about the same? We would think that earlier treatment would be better, but actually the cohort four to six, in smaller numbers had higher response rates, so it was a little bit backwards so to go. me. So, so T cell exhaustion, number of lines of therapy, unimportant, baseline activity, eight to 12%. And then third, is there an opportunity for this enrichment with the pdl one score, however you measure it? And the answer is maybe. Maybe. 